So in this question we have a car that's traveling along a very busy road and then we can see the distance uh, time graph for a six minute period. So first of all let's just discuss a bit the type of motion in each, in each case. So on a distance time graph the diagonal line shows that the car is moving at a constant speed. And, and why is that? There's a couple of ways to explain why this is the case. So first we can say that for the same time periods it's covering the same distance. If we look for example for the first half a minute we can see that it has covered 50 meters. So half minute 50 meters. Then if we look at the other half minute from here to there it went from 50 to 100. So another 0 0.5 minutes, another 50 meters, right? So since the time period is the same with the change in the distance, then we can say that it's moving at a constant at a constant speed. The, the other way is that we can explain it through the gradient because on a distance time graph, gradient shows the, the speed. So the value for a straight line, the value for the gradient of a straight line is, is constant, therefore constant speed. So the first part is asking us to find the total amount of time the car is stationary during this period. Now stationary will be represented with horizontal lines. And why horizontal lines? Because you can see at one minute, for example, it was 100 meters it has covered 100 meters at two minutes it was still 100 meters the distance at three minutes the distance was still 100 meters therefore it didn't move otherwise if he moved the distance would have been increased so we need to find the total amount of time during these two stationary um, periods so for the first one it's from one minute to three minutes therefore this is two minutes and the next one is from four to five point five so this is one point five minutes so two and one point five therefore the total will be three point five uh, minutes uh, now this is a two point mark so finding the answer will just give you one point the second point goes by showing how did you find these numbers on the graph, like the way we draw on the graph? Um, explain which stage of the graph A, B, C, D or E shows the car moving at the slowest speed. So we have already mentioned about the gradient. So on a distance time graph, the gradient shows the speed. So the steeper the line, that means the higher the speed. So if I have a distance time graph, and I have two cars, car A and car B. Car B has a more steep line, more higher gradient that shows more speed. How can we also explain that? After a specific time, we can see that car A has traveled that distance, but on the same time, car B has traveled even more distance. Therefore, of course, car B is moving at a higher speed. So, if we compare all these sections, we can see that section A is the one that uh, has a, having the smallest gradient, is the less steep comparing to C and E. It's something you can recognize by eye. In that case, you don't need to do any calculations. All right? so you, you need to write down that section A is the one. And why? Because the gradient, which is the speed, um, has the smallest value. Uh, yeah, or is less steep. So moving on, state the equation linking average speed, distance moved, and time taken. So. In this kind of questions, try to use the words that are given there. A lot of students are trying to write the 
they try to write the equation by using symbols and then if they get a wrong symbol then they miss a point so it's better if it's more safe if you use um, the words that are given there so for average speed our formula will be distance move over time taken um, then avoid using any triangles a lot of students are using triangles so speed distance time this is not a formula and we need to calculate the speed of the car at stage c so i have copied the the graph here so it's easier to access it so we need to find the average speed during this time so therefore i need to find how much distance it has covered so it went from 100 to 300 so the distance is between these two which is 200 and the time is from three minutes to four minutes which is one minute so applying the formula average speed will be distance over time we can say 200 over one now in that case if we are using meters and minutes then the answer will be 200 meters per minute if i decide to convert um, minutes into seconds that will be 60 seconds therefore the answer should have been in meters per second which in this case is 3.33 meters per second and the last one is about stating two factors that could affect the braking distance of the car so just uh, as a reminder the stopping distance it can be split into the thinking distance the distance that you cover until you react until you hit the brake and then the braking distance which is the distance you cover uh, after you hit the brake so you can pause the video and and read the, this table but in this case we're looking for braking distance so braking distance is affected either by the conditions of the of the car about the tires about the brakes it can be the conditions of the road if it's like slippery road if it's like an old dirt road it can be affected by the weather yep um, if it's wet and stuff if it's raining and of course the mass of the car if the car is is heavier it's going to take longer to stop and there's one more factor that affects both thinking distance and braking distance which is the speed of the car so if the car is moving faster it will cover more distance during the thinking time and more distance during the braking time.